Hey, and welcome to the little secret part of my pop-up class that everybody, including people on Instagram, not just YouTube, <laughs> gets to see while I wait for people to roll in, but only the people who re-watch it. So, I'm here to do a little pop-up class, and I'm going to be making um, basically a watermelon herbal electrolyte, right? You guys seem to like my cherry limeade electrolyte, and I was like getting ready to make this self, make this self, make this for <laughs> myself today, because it's really muggy here today, and it's like supposed to get really hot next week, and I'm like, mm, I need to start working on my electrolytes now before I feel like shit. What is an electrolyte? And electrolytes are like, it's got what plants crave. <laughs> if you've never watched Idiocracy, well, <clears throat> you'll watch that. But basically, your body needs things like potassium and magnesium and copper and salt, you know, sodium to function. And without those, you feel horrible. And drinking water doesn't replace that. And yes, we need water to remain hydrated, but you need these electrolytes to keep the water in your body. If you are pissing all of the time, like no matter what, like you drink a ton of water and you're peeing all the time, you're stripping the minerals out of your body and you can't retain that water uh, in a good way because you don't have enough electrolytes in your body and so and so this is basically just going to be a recipe that I was going to make anyways and all you need is some watermelon and I am using lemon balm today I literally just choked myself I took a breath <laughs> I was like smell it for him and then like the leaf covered my nose I was like <laughs> Um, you could use normal mint if you want. Lemon balm is in the mint family. Lemon balm goes fantastic with watermelon. Dried lemon balm will taste like ass. You want to use fresh lemon balm if you have it um, growing. So this is really simple, but there's something that I need you to know about me. There are two things. I will ruthlessly eat the heart out of a watermelon. <laughs> If you cut your watermelon in half, leave it on your counter, and I'm nearby, and you come back, and you're like, what the fuck? What happened to the center of my watermelon? I ate it, and I don't feel bad about it at all. It's the best part of the watermelon. <laughs> it really is. Okay, <clears throat> so you're really just going to want to um, chop your watermelon up, and you need yourself, like, a blender or a food processor. Either will work. I mean, I guess you could, like, muddle it by hand, probably. <laughs> uh <clears throat> You could also maybe use like a potato masher, but you know, I'm going to use um, a blender today. Um, and really, you're just going to chop up your watermelon, right? Which, if you didn't know this, watermelon is absolutely loaded with magnesium, potassium, copper, vitamin C, a little bit of selenium. We need all of this stuff for our cells to function properly, right? You really, you need to be having these things in your body. Now, the other thing you need to know is that all of these require sodium, and there's not really any sodium in watermelon. So the next thing you need to know about me is that I forgot, oh, there it is, is that I am never prepared for videos, <laughs> but also I eat salt in my watermelon. Now, here's the funny thing. People are like, watermelon makes me pee like crazy. Yeah, it has some diuretic actions, but mainly it's because of how much liquid you're taking in and the fact that there's no sodium with it. So if you eat, if you put salt on your watermelon, if you're one of those people like me, raise your hand because you're awesome. <laughs> if you eat salt with your watermelon, it won't make you pee all the time like it does other people. Right. You know why? Because you need that real good, a high quality sodium, not table salt crap but like high quality, like sea salt or things like that. Um, it helps your body maintain the water by helping your body maintain the electrolytes, right? And so it's the stuff of life. And so really you just watch me, you know, do a sloppy job of cutting up some watermelon. I'm sure I'm gonna get <laughs> some comments about it. Um, okay, so let's add a little bit more. I'm probably gonna end up doing the whole watermelon, well the whole half. I ate the other half already. <laughs> I just chop it open and then I just kind of leave it on the counter throughout the day and I drive by eat it. 
I drive by, salt, watermelon, walk away again. And it just ends up being this big empty bowl when I'm done, usually at the end of the day. Watermelon is one of my favorite fruits. Although I will say as of like the past five years, they don't taste the same anymore. And now I don't live anywhere in the South, but I do live near Hermiston, Oregon, which we have like used to have like famous Hermiston melons, right? Because we are in the high mountain desert, so it gets nice and hot here and we have good soil. They don't, they don't even taste sweet anymore, right? So I'm just, again, I'm just putting my watermelon in there, right? Now I'm going to add about a half a tablespoon of salt. Um, I want to say that you don't have to do this part, but yes, you do. You need the salt with the electrolytes from the watermelon. You really need that, right? Um, and so I'm going to use about a half tablespoon of salt, but I should say that this is like the rock type salt. This is the like Celtic salt. I really like this type. Um, and so a half tablespoon of like finer salt might be too much. So I start with like a half teaspoon at a time, probably. Um, okay, so, but you need that salt. Now, because I had a lime, I'm going to use a lime. <laughs> Watermelon and lime go pretty good together. Um, and lime is going to kick up your um, potassium levels, right? A little bit of vitamin C too, of course, a lot of vitamin C. And um, watermelon has a lot of vitamin C in her too. And so I'm just going to use up this lime. This thing, I always slip on it. I have dysgraphia, so like my head doesn't communicate with my hand right. Like it's a type of, um, type of um, dyslexia. And so I like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like putting caps on things is my own, own personal health. So now I'm going to add in the lime juice. I has like juice of one lime. You can do lemon too, I'm guessing. Um, and now I'm going to add in my lemon balm. Now this is where the herb comes in. Lemon balm is really fantastic for supporting your immune function. She really likes to support us through things like, like the flu, our nausea, our like shingles or anything in that type of family. So if you are like coming out of like, I don't know, feeling really gross and you're needing to get some electrolytes in you and you don't want to be drinking things like, you know, Gatorade or whatever, and that stuff is just trash for your body, especially with all the dyes and everything in it, lemon balm would be a good ally here. So now this looks pretty full, but it's going to blend down. So I'm going to put the lemon balm in there and I'm going to struggle to get this fucking cap on <laughs> because that's reality. Okay, so now I'm going to make a bunch of sound and you're going to watch me blend a thing. Okay, now for everybody freaking out, don't worry, I save this stuff, I always do. I mean like, I save the live video and I'll upload it to YouTube. Um, and oh, I almost forgot, because I always lose the top to this, I got a cover, it's gonna juice everywhere. I mean I have the top, there's a little hole up here. And I'm just gonna hit like the smoothie button. I don't have patience for the smoothie button, I'm gonna hit the chop button gonna argue with me. And I'm gonna scare a bunch of people. chunks of like the stem and stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this watermelon to it um, just because I've got it here to do it and there's space in there now see it looks like I was gonna make a ton but it really didn't um, oh my gosh that smells good now if your watermelon isn't particular sweet particularly sweet even though some people are gonna lose their shit about this I suggest adding a tablespoon or so of sugar. <laughs> now that's not just for taste but because every cell in your body requires glucose to function and when fruit isn't sweet enough, if it's not ripe enough, sometimes that can be a little hard on our body to process it. So if you just give it a tablespoon or something of high quality unrefined sugar, um, you should be good to go. It'll make it taste a little bit better and your body will be grateful for it. So many people are terrified of sugar. Don't eat a, you know, a, a process because oh, it came back and maybe it recorded it. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, don't be completely terrified of sugar, right? Um, all right, so I'm going to get this lid back on there. And I'm going to 
God, this thing fights me every time. It's a good blender, but I hate the lid design. I really do. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to just give it a chop again. Ooh, it's full now. Better stop because it's like I'm full enough I'm going to come out. Now, you have two options now. Now, um... You can use it as is. You can, you know, store it with the pulp inside of it, or you can strain it. Um, so you can strain it if you want, and if you strain it, it'll last longer in the fridge. It'll last about four, maybe five days max in the fridge, whereas if you don't strain it, I want you to use it up within about three days. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strain it because I want to save it for the hot days that are coming. And so glass jar, funnel filter. Remember my magnesium video? <laughs> this one shouldn't spill on me too bad. Um, as long as I go slow. Now this isn't a super fine mesh sieve, but it's enough that it helps me get out, you know, some of the chonky bits or any of maybe the lemon balm stem that didn't blend up. Um, and I should have had, I'm just going to flop it onto this thing. Should have had a, sometimes you have to take the sediment out of your sieve to get it to keep straining, right? Um, but I really like this. Now, you can drink this as is cold over ice, or you can turn it into popsicles for your kids. You can turn it into a smoothie for yourself or a mocktail, or you could even use it with alcohol if you, if you do drink alcohol. I don't personally drink, um, but I mean, at least you'd be drinking electrolytes with your alcohol, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it takes a little bit of a minute to strain because it does have all the pulp in there from the watermelon. Um, and things like that. And I kind of just rock it back and forth because, you know, that helps it get past. But eventually you are going to have to... I need a bowl for... Oh, look up, April. I'm going to use a pan because <laughs> that's what was close to me. Um, eventually you do have to take um, the sediment out of your strainer, right? Because it's just going to be forever if you don't. And so I'm just going to flop it in. And then you can take that sediment and you can do a second slower strain. But if you're like me and slightly impatient, <laughs> you want to get a majority of the liquid out first, right? Like I do. And then I can fuck with trying to strain the sediment a little slower. Um, <clears throat> you could get creative here and add, again, you could use mint and some of the lemon balm. You could toss in some strawberries, some cherries, whatever you wanted fruit that you were using with it. I mean, ultimately, fruits are exceptionally hydrating on their own. We're just picking watermelon because, you know, water is in the name of watermelon. <laughs> so there's more liquid here. But um, you're always going to find loads of things like potassium and magnesium and vitamin C and copper um, and all of these fruits. And you really need those to function. Now, copper is an overlooked one. A lot of people don't think about copper as a vital mineral. They're worried about copper pipes and all this kind of stuff. But the thing is... You need p copper to utilize iron and bet my bottom dollar that if you've been struggling with um, anemia, like iron deficiency your entire life and you can never get your numbers up and you're always exhausted, you're actually probably overburdened by iron and low in copper because if you don't have copper, you can't utilize the iron. You can't like shuttle it into your cells, right? But here's the thing, if you have too much copper in your diet because they add it to everything, like fortified with copper, shavings, and everything we eat, it actually tanks your copper levels, and then you can't use your iron. So they're like, oh, you better take more iron. <laughs> and you're like, no matter what I do, I'm tired all the time. You probably have a copper deficiency, not an iron deficiency. Um, but yeah, and, and so people really overlook the need to have copper in their diet. Now, of course, the best place to get copper is from various fruits, especially if you're using like watermelon, um, fresh oranges. When you pasteurize orange juice, it tends to um, get rid of the copper. Um, but also, obviously, things like seafood have a lot of copper in them. Oysters really um, balance with copper and zinc. Oh, and by the way, if you've been one of those people that's like jumped on the zinc bandwagon during the whole you know, since 2020 forward, you're probably deficient in copper because if you take zinc, it depletes copper too. Um, so, you know, don't overlook copper. And I really like that this, I know, is full of copper because of the watermelon is. 
Um, and this damn strainer is taking forever. I should have got, <laughs> I should have got a little bit of a thicker one. So while we wait for that strain, let me look at the comment section here. Um, what are we making? We are making um, a watermelon lemon balm electrolyte. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find any other questions in the comment there. My hands are so sticky. Um, last three days without straining, but about five if you strain it. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, did we toss the pole? How long did they say it would last? All, they're all about. <laughs> they're all about how long will it last? Um, so I'm not making any headway there. Um, can you freeze it and use it at a later date? Yep, you sure can. Um, you like my dress? Thank you. Um, like my earrings? Thank you. Let me scroll down. Maybe there's new ones. Um, where do we buy a lemon balm? That's a good question. Um, buying it fresh is a little tricky because she's more of an, an herb that's used for her herbal properties versus culinary uses. You might find it at your local, um, like garden greenhouse type area where you can buy starts from you might put an ad up on like your facebook classifieds or gardening groups or even your craigslist in the farming section um asking to harvest lemon balm or even to transplant some lemon balm now if you live like in a city or in an apartment and you happen to have a balcony or a really sunny window lemon balm is happy to grow in a pot she will grow in your backyard she'll grow easily i mean she will also take over so if you don't have her in a pot and you plant her in the ground you need to accept the fact that she will start showing up in other places and she'll start spreading like mints do um okay so i'm gonna clean that out a little bit um but yeah she's a really easy one to grow she does grow wild in quite a lot of places even though she's not native to the u.s she's actually from like the mediterranean uh and like the iberian peninsula area which is like spain and portugal and all that area um you might find her in like southern france some parts of italy she really likes that warm and somewhat humid or even dry climates which is why she's like all about where i'm at in northeast oregon she's just everywhere right but if you have found catnip growing it's very likely that if you keep looking you might find lemon balm because they kind of they're like cousins they're in the same family right um but yeah so if someone said their lemon balm died in hot arizona it can um i live in high mountain desert of northeast oregon so uh we're not quite as dry but we can hit 120 degrees <laughs> so it gets plenty hot you know um and i wouldn't say it's like today it's kind of humid out um just because we've got like thunderstorms rolling through and I'm in here sweating, regretting not putting the fan on. But you know, it looks like I'm going to get about, once I restrain the stuff that I'm slopping out into that pot bucket, <laughs> um, I am going to probably end up with about a half a gallon of juice. Now, if you really wanted to, I guess you could water this down some. You could, oh, you could um, cut it with like limeade or lemonade, I bet. Um, and it would still work like an electrolyte. You'd still get way more of the benefits from the intact vitamins and like um, electrolytes from the watermelon herself versus the pasteurized juice that you buy from the store. Um, now, I should say when you're drinking like um, like lemonade and stuff, there's still going to be like from the store, there's still going to be a fair amount of vitamin C and some potassium. It's just not as much. It's kind of like if you're drinking raw milk compared to pasteurized milk. They're both good for us, but the raw milk will have more like cultures and like minerals and things like that intact because the pasteurization process didn't kill it, right? Um, so yeah, and this is so easy. I mean, it's a little messy. I'm kind of sticky, <laughs> but it's, it's really easy to do. And sometimes um, my love of watermelon Sometimes my love of watermelon will have me buying multiple watermelons, maybe more than I could realistically eat um, at any given time <laughs> without it going bad. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make some watermelon juice because it's easier to drink something quicker than it is to eat something, for me at least. And plus then, you know, kids will drink it. Again, you can make it into popsicles. You can make it into ice cubes to so put it in your water. You know, if you drink like sparkling water or something like that and then like stick a sprig of like lemon balm in there and act super fancy. <laughs> um, and you can turn it into like a smoothie with ice or anything like that with this heat, with this heat coming up. But 
you really want to be using these electrolytes before you get dehydrated. And again, if you are peeing a lot and there's not something wrong with your kidneys, um, you probably need more sodium, like high quality sodium and um, electrolytes in your diet, right? That'll stop you from peeing so much um, and help your body utilize a little bit more um, of what you're taking in. Now there's a lot of liquid left in this still. I don't know if it makes sense to clear this out before I put it back in, but I think I'm gonna. Um, now, again, you don't have to clear this out. If you're going to use it up, oh, you know what? If you were going to turn this into popsicles, I wouldn't strain it, right? Because then you have all the pulp in there, and I will say that um, the pulp is good for you. It does contain a lot of fiber and things like that. If you're somebody that's dealing with blood sugar issues, um, you might want to leave the pulp in it because it slows down how fast your body is getting access to that life-giving glucose right so it could slow it down a little bit you could get creative if you were like that if you were going to turn this into um popsicles you could blend it with like some vanilla yogurt maybe or maybe some plain yogurt depending on like what you like flavor wise um and then you could turn that into popsicles so it's got the protein alongside of the glucose right um and so i added about as far as how much salt i added i added about um, a half tablespoon of um this celtic sea salt that i really like um but this is like the coarse kind which means if i add a half of that amount i mean if i add that amount it's not as much as if it was finely ground i'd probably start with like at least half a teaspoon and work my way up from there you want it to taste a little bit salty you need that salt to help the other electrolytes stay in your body right um this is obviously a thing that kids would like doing with you <laughs> because it's messy it's making sloppy sounds and it's <laughs> it's getting all over um at least when they're younger i don't know how my my kids are my kids are older one's moved out and living with a girlfriend you know one's almost graduating from high school i'm <laughs> i'm past that fun with mom stage and kind of just the side eye stage now <laughs> um but yeah it really wasn't that hard it took a little bit of time but you can get creative with it you could even try things like a little bit of basil you could do a little bit of tulsi like be creative you saw me use lemon balm you saw me use watermelon and there wasn't an exact amount this is about intuition it's not about having everything perfectly figured out knowing like exact measurements it's about getting in here and trusting that you are smart enough to be curious and try because you are absolutely smart enough to do this we just you know pulverize some watermelon with some lemon balm and added some salt and a little bit of lime because i had one right there was no exact science to this you don't need to pay somebody a ton of money to learn this you don't need anybody's permission to try to do this besides your own and realizing that you are incredibly capable of doing this no matter what anybody has told you you are smart enough to do this so i'm pretty much finished up straining off most of what i got i'll let that sit there and drip a little bit longer you know and it's a little shy this is a half gallon jar so i got about oh let's see what it says here it's got measurements on the side i got uh four and a half cups right but if you don't drink a ton of juice or if you did a whole watermelon right because that was just a half watermelon that i had eaten the heart out of so it wasn't even a full one um you would definitely get a full half gallon if not a little bit more and look how beautiful Look at how beautiful the color of that juice is. Also, can we just talk about the fact that this would be like, I don't know, $100 worth of fresh, pressed juice at the store? And that watermelon, I got it on sale and it was still ridiculously overpriced because I live in a food desert. But I still think I paid, I think I paid less than $12 for it because it was on sale. Um, and you know, I, I ate the other half already. <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to buy that for $12 at the store. You really wouldn't and it's full of way more nutrients than you would find if you were buying something pre-made and pasteurized so if you like my random pop-up videos if you like my everything i'm about my random rantings and slopping watermelon mess everywhere if you're watching on instagram make sure or youtube make sure you like comment subscribe share turn on notifications all of these things help people realize that they're smart enough to do this too, that it helps them see this information, it helps them get started. If you want to support my general existence and my capacity to buy an overpriced watermelon, <laughs> consider calling something home from my shop by following the link in my bio, or if you're on YouTube, I'll drop that link um, in the description. 
all kinds of stuff like that really helps me. And if you're watching on Instagram, come find me on YouTube because there's all kinds of stuff over there that's not over there and vice versa. If you're watching on YouTube, come find me on Instagram because there's stuff on here that's not on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining my pop-up class and I hope that you will uh, make yourself some electrolytes to keep yourself hydrated this summer. So thanks for joining folks. Bye.